awesome today to have my good mate, man crush Aaron Williams, the founder, CEO of Mindstar, here to jointly deliver with me, myself, the I suppose the founder and CEO of um, Switch On, our wellbeing portal. It's been a couple of years in the making, but I think it's going to be a wonderful product. And yeah, thanks Aaron for coming along today and sharing with us the journey and some tips to our audience about you know, how we handle this you know, crazy season and crazy year it's been. And let's get into 2021 in a fresh mindset and ready to rock and roll. Thank you, Brad, mate. Great to be here. So uh, absolutely stoked. And uh, I'm not sure what the man crush is about, but I'll take it. <laughs> You're a good looking man, Aaron. And mate, you've got a you know, nice dulcet tones, buddy. So that, <laughs> that goes, partly goes, goes um, a fair way. But Aaron, and your sort of experiences, and we'll talk a bit about the wellbeing portal and what's, what's sort of going to be in there and um, the facts and the videos and the content and the, um, the resources. But mate, how do you summarise being a wellbeing professional? How do you summarise 2020, the year has been? How are people, how are people feeling? I can see it from a business sense. People have struggled, but people yeah. are by nature resilient. I think it's an Australian, it's the Australian way to be. But how have you seen the year, mate? And what can we do to keep pushing on? Mate, 2020, I mean, uh, what a year, seriously. Um, but I think even if we take a, take a step back, it, it's not just 2020. If we go back to 2019, so yeah, 2019, we had, it started with, you know, a prolonged drought. Then we go into bizarre hailstorms across the country, especially in Queensland. Uh, we had corporate restructures. We go into national bushfires. So people in 2019, especially small business owners, were going, you know, let's get rid of this year. 2020, bring it on. This is going to be fantastic. Yeah. Brand new year, brand, you know, reset, restart. So they've come into 2020, a lot of people already feeling fairly knackered and, and, and strung uh, pretty thin and then what happens we get hit with a global pandemic so I, I, to answer your question I think what ha people are feeling and what I'm seeing across all industries uh, all businesses the common theme is fatigue so it's it's fatigue uh, um, people are knackered they're kind of really falling into Christmas and, and looking forward to the new year but also I think uh, we're seeing fatigue we're seeing people feel kind of uh, I suppose stressed and anxious in our world, um, the old saying is, if you want to give someone a whole bunch of stress or even an anxiety disorder, give them uncertainty. Uh, and how much uncertainty do we have at every level of our life at the moment? Yeah, definitely, Aaron. And I think what it has made a lot of businesses have to pivot, change their business model. But I think a lot of people and conversations I'm having as well, everyone's priorities have really changed. I think it's not about... Because I think uh, the consensus is that majority business um, industry has done it tough for periods of time during the um, COVID period. But I think sort of family health is becoming more paramount, more important. What what can we do? Like there will be people out there who are fatigued but can't afford to have that break, can't afford that trip to the coast or um, to have that you know, fishing retreat. What do those people do, Aaron? Are yeah. they, what, how do they sort of go home at night and get themselves up for the next day but still keep you know, keep themselves going for their family sake yeah look uh, the work i do with organizations and you know I'm, I'm lucky enough to work with organizations like department of prime minister and cabinet and and, and woolworths group across the country and you know swiss vitamins and uh, construction all kinds of different right down to smes and, and i think the work i do with organizations i talk about there's really you know four stages of COVID. So stage one was kind of that shock. I mean, this thing came on really quickly. No one, government included, didn't see this coming so quickly. The shutdown was quick. So the stage one was that shock. What do you mean we've got to homeschool? You know, how, how are we going to work from home? What does it mean for the business? What does it look like for... So there's all this sort of first, that sort of more logistical stuff and, and, and just getting over the shock and, and the restructure stuff. And stage two is really, it's if you want to call it um, riding the wave, really. So it's, it could be called flattening the curve, but it's kind of a roller coaster ride. So we're on this roller coaster, and it's one of those roller coasters that's in pitch black, and uh, you're not sure when the next dip's coming or the right hand turn. So we don't know, you know, what's happening next, how long this is going for from, a, from an economy kind of view, point of view, but also from a business point of view. So what we've got to do during that time while we ride this wave is, is look after ourselves and, and in a sustainable way, because, you know, stage three, is recovery. We will come through this thing. And we know from past world wars and global pandemics and, uh, you know, financial meltdowns that 
we will come out the other side of this, and that's the that's we need to make sure we're not knackered when we do. So we need to need to look after ourselves and our people, and kind of remember that narrative. It, this this will pass, um, and the stage four is that that new world of workplace wellbeing, and I think for small business. Yeah, you know, some of the things, and I'll, I can talk at length about it, you know, some of the things, really simple things you can do every day. And what it comes down to, to be honest, is stuff like sleep, exercise, nutrition, and having some fun. You know, actually socialising and, and, not, and not letting it get on top of you. Because, you know, small business, it's a tough gig. It, it's, it's, I'm a small business owner. It's, it's one of the hardest. Yeah. And... Aaron, I think um, obviously through conversation with yourself, um, the border switch on, we have tried to, you know, we want to provide a forum for Ipswich to be the healthiest workplace, the healthiest city in the country. You have um, implemented this program already at the Sunshine Coast. How was that received, mate? And I, I dare say here in some of the stories, it's been a fantastic success. And how can Ipswich people get behind um, the live portal, which, you know, the, um, the group of Switch On have created? And I suppose you, the community, have helped fund. What can we do to make it? evolve into something that's great and grandiose and can continue to evolve. Yeah, mate, it's it's so exciting. It really is. This is something that we rolled out in 2019 in the Sunshine Coast region, um, then uh, also in the Gympie region, uh, and, and the response has been amazing. I, I think, it, it, to me, it's the most meaningful work we've done. Uh, we've had over 500 businesses sign up. We've had over 15,000 um, hits to the, to the website. Um, and just, I think, it, st- it started a conversation between both small business but also large corporates. So we're all, it's basically the community coming together to solve an issue, which is people's well-being through, through business. And it's about stress. It's about how do you, how do you get that, that balance between your, your work and your home life. Um, and it's, it's how do you be the best leader and best person you can be. So it's, it's, there's a whole bunch of resources on there, everything from um, you know, stuff you can watch, um, so, you know, the, the Unpack program, which is, is about is interviews with remarkable people from all walks of life who, who tell their, their stories of well-being. Um, there's local stories. We've got some, you know, local champions on there. So it's, it's a space for Ipswich business people to, to deal with their day-to-day life shit, to be honest. And also on that, Aaron, we have got some great local um, stories there. And um, shout out to Matthew Bowden, and Brad Odding, and Colby Stefanovic for their sharing their stories about their journey um, in life, in business, how they've handled COVID, how they've handled their relationships with their staff, with their family as well. And I, I obviously being an accountant and I suppose try, I am someone who, you know, we can only do so much with someone's tax or financial position, but there's a whole other process to understand in terms of the people's makeup and who they are and what makes them tick as well. I. I, Aaron, do you sort of agree with me here? I see a massive synergy between someone's financial well-being and their mental well-being as well. And if they can get that financial well-being right in terms of financial goals, budgets, um, how to manage finances, I think that can help the other side, being their well-being and their social relationships as well. Is that sort of a tested factor? 100%. And we know that small business owners are well overrepresented with stress and also mental health issues. Because challenges, you know, because, as I said, it's a hard gig. And, and what concerns me the most is, firstly, a lot of small business owners and employees feel like they've got to do it on their own, that they're, they're the only one going through this kind of, you know, roller coaster where you're worried about, you know, cash flow, you're, you're doing the books late at night. And, and what concerns me the most is, I think it's three quarters of small business owners say that they don't share their challenges with anyone. So not even with their partner, they don't talk about it, they just basically suck it up and try and punch through. And it's, you know, it's it's probably the worst thing you can do because we're all in this together. And I think this is exactly what, you know, Well HQ is. It's about bringing the community together. So together we're stronger, I think, than, than you know, sitting by yourself with a bottle of wine at 10 p.m. when I was on a Sunday night wondering how you're going to get through the next month. Yeah. And my advice to that is too, if you're going to have that bottle of wine, have it with someone else. Have it with your wife, have it with your friends. I think we all do. I think my um, good mate Benny Hayward said this to me yesterday, is that, Brad, you take things too serious. Soak, soak the success up. It's been a great year. We've achieved so much. And I think we do. And something through Switch On. So anyone who's listening in today, come to one of our, visit our website, come to one of our events. We have a great time. But I think that's a massive part of wellbeing as well as 
sharing stories, having a beer if that's what you want to do or have a soda water, doesn't matter. Um, it's about having fun. It's about connecting. And I think any event that I run, whether it be of a business finance orientation, the best part I've seen, I think what most people get out of it is being able to talk to other business owners and share their struggles because we might sell different services, we might sell different products, but we have the same problems and we, have the, we all have to rely on staff. We all have to rely on the customer, our target market. So... I think we've all got to get together, have some fun, and yeah, don't be alone. And that's something, Aaron, I suppose, from your perspective, have you, with your business and your evolution in life, have you surrounded yourself with uh, mentors and people that specialise in different different areas of life and business? Changed my life. You know, I went from the first four years after founding a, you know, a new business, sort of stumbling along and trying to learn from mistakes. And the moment I got a business mentor and a coach, all of a sudden, you know, I've got this team. I don't have to do it solo. I don't know everything, I'll tell you right now. So I've got smarter people than me who, who fill the gaps, you know, and, and working with people like yourself. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible. And so all of a sudden it takes the pressure off because you, can, you make the decisions yourself, but you check those decisions with people. So it gives you a certain uh, safety net. Maybe it's a certain more, more confidence because, yeah, it's it's, 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 cause it's not doing it alone just for this week or next week. You know, I'm 47. I've got 20 to 30 years of work more, so I want to make it sustainable and, and, and keep having that support so I can, I can do it. And I suppose what I come back to is the question I always say that every single working Australian should ask themselves is the first is, how am I turning up to work? And the second is, how am I turning up at home in life? And, and in a perfect world, the two don't overlap. So I think it's, it's, it's what you're saying. It's, it's how, do you, how do you separate, how do you not bring the stress of your job or your business home to your family? How do you switch off and actually have that joy and that fun? And, and you know, or how, how do you make sure that you're not with the people you love, with, with, your, with your partner, your kids, your friends, and you're not mentally just still thinking about the cash flow or your inbox yeah. or that, that, that stuff, you know, you got to get on the tomorrow. So it's not, you know, not present. And, and, and like you say, you're, you're, not, you're, you're sweating the small stuff too much. Yeah. And Aaron, you did mention, um, you know, checking on your wellbeing. Um, visit our portal. There is a quiz. Um, there is a test as well. And you can do it at your own time, at your own pace. But please use those resources that we have in those quizzes because sometimes self-diagnosis, you know, you might think something's wrong. Yeah, use, you know, base it up with fact and base it, um, make your decisions based on information that's available on our portal site as well. I think, Aaron, what you did touch on as well with respect to business, and I see it all the time, it's too hard to try to be everything. Yep. Like in business with um, things like single touch payroll coming on, you've got to build a website, you've got to register a domain name, you've got to know what pay rates to pay people. I think I see so many people just sweat all that stuff. There are outsourcing solutions in that area. And often if you're, the, you're a plumber and you can invoice someone 120 bucks an hour, why not do that and outsource some of these other pressures in life? It's not all about keeping every last dollar that you can make. You'll actually will find that, you know, by using some professionals and, you know, you may think you're going to lose money and you may think it's a cost of your business, but it's actually an investment in your business and your health. So that's, yeah. That Agreed. And, and, and it's doing the stuff you're good at. You know, it, if you, the more you're doing that and, and growing your business and doing the stuff you love and getting that support for the stuff, which, which you know, is often the most time-consuming stuff, all of a sudden the pressure lifts. Yeah. And, and um, you know, I think that's, it's that. And the other thing I'd say is the, the best tip I've ever been given and, and, and sort of work with is, is, a, is a bloke I work with. He's a CEO, massively, you know, busy, busy job, a lot of stress. So what he does to separate out, separate out his, his work day and his home day, so he, he comes home, comes in, walks in the front door, opens the door, and his, his, his family are there and, hey, Dad, he goes, everyone, hang on, give me two minutes. And he goes into the bedroom and he takes off his work clothes. He goes into the bathroom and has a shower and, and you know, physically and, and symbolically washes the work day away. He comes out back in the bedroom, puts his dad clothes on, walks in the lounge room. Hey, everyone, hugs all around. He's left the stress of his day behind. behind. He's, he's, there, he's there with his family. So I think these little tips, this is, this is what Well HQ is all about. It's these kind of easy, simple, practical tips that can, can make all the difference with someone's day-to-day. -day. That's awesome. I might start with 10 minutes, Aaron. Two minutes is probably too, too lofty of a goal to start with. <laughs>
But you're hundred percent, and we all sometimes you can get lost in the you know, the paperwork, the what we really want to achieve at life. Do you think goal setting's a big thing, Aaron, and actually being, you know, I suppose transparent, clear with your loved ones what you are trying to achieve in life? I find often you we go about our day and we're crazy and we just don't know what we're doing while we're achieving it. And I don't even know myself. I've sort of have had a um, executive coach the last twelve months, um, Josie Thompson, um, wonderful woman, very inspirational in her own um, in her own right. But I've actually sat back and worked out well, what are my priorities? What mm. are my non-negotiables? What are my values? And that's really helping me with my decision making moving forward. And for me, it's paramount family is one of my, and stability is one of my paramount values. So that's how I make my decisions. Is that something you think that we just got to sort of reset sometimes and you know, uh, what are we trying to do here? Yeah, I think, I think goals and values, two things that sort of I, I, you know, run my life around, if you like, and 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 that's the work I do with my executive well-being clients is absolutely, because I, and it's, I think if you think about small business especially, and I, I launched a, a small business with with my wife, you know, which has its own mental health issues on both sides, I think, but it's but it's the idea that if we don't have the same goals, if we're if we're working to different goals, even if we're you know kicking ass. We're doing different things and, and all of a sudden you find yourself going, hang on, I don't want that. And so it doesn't help the business. So absolutely shared goals is one thing, especially if you're working with your partner, but any sort of business partner, if you don't have shared goals, then you're not working to the same, the same outcome. And the second is values. And values sounds kind of, can people go, oh, it sounds a bit soft, but it's not. It's basically what's most important to you deep down? What deep, deep down is most important to you? Why are you, why are you getting out of bed in the morning? You know, so it's it, so what our... What, what our values do, they're, they're like the rudder that helps navigate or, 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 or you know, navigate through the chaos that sometimes small business or business in general feels like in our life. So, it's, so if you know what your values are, it's all really simple. And, and for me, I've got three very simple goals. And I ask, it's usually in the shower. You know, I have, when, it, when, it, when it feels like everything's out of control, I'm under stress, whatever else, I ask myself three very simple questions. Am I being a good husband? Am I being a good dad? Am I living every day and having some fun and, and living a full life? And once you do that, everything else falls away. It's like, oh, you know, stuff that, stuff that invoice, you know. Or you just start to think it brings you back to the simple simple day-to-day -day things that, that can help you get through stressful times. Uh, and Aaron, in your work with um, corporate execs, um, with business owners, what, what are the common problems that people have got? And what are, you know, I mean... Uh, some of them self-inflicted, or do you find it's just sometimes we just can't help the way we're wired and what our front, what our makeup is as a person? What what are you? What things do you see, and what are prolific so that we can sort of as viewers and listeners and followers of the um, our wellbeing HQ um, feel oh that isn't abnormal. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm one of the yeah you know, I'm one of the normal ones because um, I think we I think we all feel sometimes whether it's even myself, that it's, oh, it's my problem, I'm letting myself down. But in, in reality, you go and talk to other people, no, we're all, you know, we all suffer stress at certain levels. We all have anxiety moments. We all, you know, and we, we are all human beings who, you know, are struggling through life together. Yep. Yeah. And, and you're exactly right. It's, it's, you know, what I often say to people is you can't tell someone else's inside from their outside. And we're all struggling. Let's just be honest about it. We're all doing the best we can. You know, you ask anyone now, get a, you know, how you doing? Oh, busy, mate. Busy, you know, stressed, stressed, busy. And, you know, just once I'd like to hear someone go, you ask him, how are you? Oh, no, good, thanks. I'm, I'm on top of it all. It's all fantastic. You think, you lazy bastard. You know, it's kind of, yeah. stress has become our norm. Yeah. And so what everyone is, everyone is struggling with is stress, but it's time. It's trying to find that balance of time and no one's winning that game, let me mm. tell you. So the people, and I've been doing this amazing piece of work over the last month, um, you know, working with 150 of the top execs in Australia and they, what I've, the people I've found who are doing better through this period especially are the ones, the first thing they say is, I'm brutal with my time and I put myself first. And they go, you know, that, I know that sounds selfish, but you kind of, I kind of went, hang on, especially as men, Often what we're doing these days is putting ourselves last. We put our business first, we put our partner first, our kids first, and there's no time for us. And we don't help anyone if we're not looking after ourselves first. You've got to put your oxygen mask on first before you can help others. Yeah. So I think that's what I'd say. It's we've got to get a little bit more brutal 
And you can't do everything, but you need to make, make sure you are quarantining some of your time for those important things, which is, you know, exercise and social stuff, like you're saying, joy. What, what, too many people I work with now go, what do you do for joy? Like, oh, 10 years ago I used to, it's yeah. like, yeah, 10 years ago, what do you do now? I'm too busy. Well, that's, you're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> do something. Yeah. And as you mentioned before, mate, is there some, well, I understand there's a lot of science to this, but what do we do as mates or um, business owners if, when we do ask a question, how you going? Mm. And they say, oh, I'm not quite right. Or, yeah, I'm okay. What do we, what signs can we, how can we handle those situations and what are the telltale signs that someone is really struggling and might need some medical help? Yep. No, uh, it's, it's, it's vitally important. And, and the first thing I'll say really clearly again and again and again is you can't do any harm from asking. If you feel like, and it's often a gut feeling, it's, you know, it's, it's like, oh, they just don't seem quite right. And, and so act on that gut feeling. And for, for it's often for blokes especially, it's um, if someone's dropped off the face of the earth, if they're, if they're not answering texts, if they're not answering phone calls, you know, I've got this deal with my brother that if I, if, I, if I call him and leave a voicemail, he doesn't answer, and then I text him, and I text him the next day and he hasn't, hasn't answered, then I text him and go, mate, you better text me, let me know you're okay, or I'll be on, I'll, I'll drive the two hours, I'll be on your front doorstep. You know, so I think it's, if people drop off, you got to follow them, text them, be there, ring them, because what we do is, uh, you know, men and women, but especially men, we just go into our cave and try and punch through. So if you feel like someone's struggling, if they're, you know, drinking more, if they're sleeping more or less, or eating more or less, or just, you know, d- out, out of sorts, then... You need to, it's really simple, get a quiet place. I don't care if you go to a public bar, take them out for a coffee and just sit them down and go, mate, I just want to check in to see if you're okay because I know you're smashed at work. I, I know the business is you know, is struggling or, or you're having a hard time or your missus just left you, whatever it is, just ask them because our, our job's not to be a psychologist or, or a counsellor. Basically, your job's to listen, yeah. connect them with professional support, and then just walk the road with them. Say, look, I'll drive you to the fir- I'll drive you there for the first um, appointment. I've got a great GP. I'll I'll, mail, I'll book it in. It's just that first connection is the hardest yep. for, for for everyone. So get them to that first chat, and then just be there with them and and just listen. We think we're good listeners. We're not. <laughs> we actually can't help trying to solve problems. Just people want to be heard. So it's really simple, and no better way to do it than over a coffee or a beer. Yeah. Awesome. And our Wellbeing HQ for listeners there, please share it with your staff and your employees. People are our biggest assets in most of our businesses. And I often look at a lot of profit and loss statements and see a lot of money being spent on repairing a building or repairing equipment or repairing machinery, but I don't see a lot of money in being spent in personal development, staff development, staff wellbeing. Aaron, as a, if you have got a team of people and you are relying on your people, how can you best manage those people from a wellbeing aspect, mate. Do you, is there something that should be done on a systematic monthly basis, weekly basis, or as leaders, is there just a, the odd conversation we can have with people, which is enough? What do you think as an organisation we should be doing um, yeah. to get the best from our people? Three things. First is Well HQ, per- perfect opportunity. And what's worked well on the sunny coast was uh, businesses having a like, morning tea put on some muffins <laughs> and have a coffee together and say, this is what we've got. We're, we're giving it to you. This is Well HQ. Followed by a walk, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> In the afternoon, absolutely. <laughs> but it is, it is. It is absolutely that. Just share it with them and, and, and have, a, have, a, have a look around and, and show them, you know, this, basically this is engaging stuff. This isn't dry, boring, you know, mental health stuff. This is about stress and well-being. And so it's, it's, they can watch videos. They can, there's a whole range of different stuff. There's a thing on there called Well HQ Recommends about podcasts and, and TED Talks and, you know, amazing stuff because there's so much noise out there. This is, we've, we've hand-picked, cherry-picked the best stuff. So, so get that to your people. That's the first thing. The second is, I think, um, having leaders trained you know training so they can help to identify if you know business owners been feeling confident to actually ask those questions and so that that kind of that that knowledge across the whole business the third as i'd say for business owners and and leaders 
it's the three key things, especially at, at tough times, is being authentic. Just be yourself and have those conversations and, and connect with your people. And if you do that, and the second thing is if you, if you are vulnerable, so if you actually you don't have to tell them your life story, but if you are vulnerable about saying, you know, I struggle from time to time as well, all of a sudden your people are going to come to you and talk to you, uh, you know, when they're unsure or struggling, both from an operational or a well-being lens. So if you show a bit of vulnerability, it just changes the whole, the whole culture of the place. And then the third is empathy. So that's about showing that empathy for your people if, they, you know, if they're a bit off their game at a, at a tough time, but also having that empathy for yourself. So if you know that you're, you're going, you know, your energy's down a bit, you just need to take your foot off the pedal. And this, this thing, COVID, but I'd say small business in general, I've seen a lot of people sprint into it. I'm seeing a lot of people fall over at the moment. And this thing's not a sprint. It's, it's a marathon. So we've got to treat it like a marathon. And it's just absolutely how, do, how you play the long game. And it's by being smarter with a short game, I think. And Aaron, if the government said to you, here's $10 million, Aaron, go and fix the country's wellbeing, where would you start? Because I think as a country, like you said, we do feel like in some instances we're running on we're running on empty. Yeah. But like I said, as a country where battlers will keep fighting, I know that's really symbolic of the Ipswich community as well. And people are passionate; they don't want to let their family down, they don't want to let their staff, you know, their staff down. But if there was a magic wand, or the government said, Aaron Williams, you're the who I, which I think you are, you're the number one health professional in the country. And I think that's why you. Jeez. A lot of the larger companies... Big rap. Big <laughs> superlative there, but I think that's why a lot of the larger companies are engaging your services. How would you spend that? What support do you need? How can we collaborate better as a country to, to really fix this problem? And I, I suppose as a, as a regional town, Ipswich, proud as punch that Switch on have been able to, to do something in partnership with Vinestar to sort of help our people. But what can we do at a, at a larger scale and larger level? What support do we need? And people like yourself and... Mindstar, what do you, what other resources and backing do you need to sort of make the, make the country a better country yep. from a health perspective? Look, I think the whole world's made up of Ipswiches and Sunshine Coasts and Gimpies. And so the first thing I'd do with 10 mil is keep doing what we're doing on a, on a larger scale. So small business. I mean, where I live, I think something like 94% of businesses are small businesses. So it's, it's the lifeblood of the community. So it's how do we, how do we bring small businesses together? Because we all work together. We're pretty much ticking off everyone. So small businesses, their employees, their families and their children. So I think that's the one thing I do want to mention. This isn't just about business. This is also about your relationship. You know, I, I do work with construction. You know what they, they say? It's a two-wife industry because the majority of them have been through multiple divorces. It's amazing. And, and, the, and the suicide rate... For, for young men is, 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 is ridiculous, you know, in, in construction alone. So I think it's how do we work with small businesses and small businesses, subbies, small, they're, you know, Uber drivers, they're the cafe on the corner, like it covers off ev- pretty much everyone you're surrounded by. So the, to answer your question, what I'd do is uh, we'd, we'd actually work, give practical tools to small business, coaching to small business, and then we'd work with schools. So it actually work with schools because that's that's how you move the needle is actually helping helping families and and helping young people who are the next generation. And the portal has an ebook written by a pretty good looking fella, Aaron. What do you think of that as a read? And should people go and um, grab that piece of um, piece of poetry and have a look at it? The ebook is awesome, and and I think especially you know as a starting point for people, it's it's yeah, it's gold. I mean that's. We've u- we've used it a lot already with with Mindstar because it's. Have you paid the royalty check yet? Yes, I have, and that Mars bar is in the mail. So um, <laughs> it, it's um, yeah, it's it, but it 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 seems ridiculous, but the more simple this stuff is, the it, the more usable it is. So it, it's kind of it needs to be people just. Yeah. It's not people. The well, last thing I want people to do is go. Oh, great! Now I've got to worry about another thing, my well-being. It's actually no. How do you introduce this into your life in in, in a really easy way to make it better? Yeah, and I, I think life and I know sort of going through kids. You know, with my wife being the best mother anyone could ever ask for, but you know, there's a cough or they're showing a symptom of something. Let's Google that. Let's read a textbook. But life isn't about a textbook, is it, Aaron? 
No. I think there's ups and downs, and sometimes it's a bit of common sense. It's a bit of a, you know, talk to a mate, at, you know, um, talk to a mate about something. Talk to someone who's lived lived through what you've lived through. But it's not a textbook, is it? Not everyone's going to find the same answer. Doesn't help the same person or everyone. Everyone's, I, everyone's journey is different, and is that we've just got to be agile and we've got to adapt. Is that? I think it's I think it's about simplicity. I think we've lost that. I think we've we overcomplicate everything, and I think. You know, if we want to talk about well-being, the question I ask people is, you know, what did you do for joy, for real joy, when you're a seven-year-old child? When you're a seven-year-old little boy or little girl, what did you do that gave you real joy? And for me, it was simple stuff like, Plum you know, pu- putting on my <laughs> putting on my whites for cricket, yeah. or you know, body surfing a wave, or or um, you know, fireworks. It's really simple stuff. And what happens is through life. The shit just piles up on top of those very simple things. So I think the more we can keep it simple, you know, the more you can do the things, you know, and it is. It's it, People say stuff like riding a bike or just spending time with my friends or playing board games or climbing a tree. It's, it's the simple things that we can do that actually bring us going to the beach, you know, going for a walk. It's, it's those simple things we can do that actually refill our tanks, you know, re, you know refuel our buckets to make us better business people, hmm. better fathers, better mothers, better friends. You know, that's yeah. that's the balance we need to look for. And I don't think my um, good mate, Matt Bowden, who, um, whose story is on our um, wellbeing portal, crack of an interview with Matt, and he spoke emotionally and from the heart. And I've seen it sort of firsthand with Matt in particular, and he'll probably say the same about me, but working as a public in 15 hour, hour days, six, seven days a week, he didn't have time to, he missed out on a lot of events, whether it be with, for family or friends. Um, he missed weeks away. Well, I think Matt also now going through a cancer scare at the moment and mm. coming through the other end of that has sort of realised that, hey, you know, had that day off, pay someone $200 to cover the bar that night. It's not going to be the last $200 you're going to have. So I think, and even for myself this year, just sharing one of my stories, I have not had as much fun as coaching my kids' cricket team this year. A little under eight team. I had to miss the last two games due to um, social responsibilities. Um, but it was real. The kids look in the eye and they listen to every, everything you got to say to them. And they're the best two hours I could spend in a week. So I think even personally from my experiences, it's about quality over quantity. I think we're all um, busy of just doing, doing, doing. But find the quality of your life. And as Aaron mentioned before, is find the time for social, f- find the time for family, find the time for work work but find the time for your own health as well but so i think they're good words aaron and let's get back to what we enjoy doing and having fun yep try and find your joy don't sweat the small stuff and and put your energy your positive energy into things you can control don't waste your time on social media screaming into an empty vacuum you know just get do stuff you can do that coach cricket team you know spend spend time with your kids turn your phone off so you're actually you're actually connecting with your partner and there's no dings that are taking you, you know, off, off, off conversation. So, yeah, it's the simple things in life. And so jump on Will HQ and that's, there's a couple of programs on there which, which help you with that. There's a me time program for women and a, and a man program for men. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's basically you watch it, it's a video on your phone that'll, that'll give you those tips on, on how to make those small changes in your life. Yeah. Aaron, it's been awesome talking to you today, mate. Love our relationship with Mindstar. I still have that man crush, even after this 30-minute interview. You look all right for 47 too, mate. Thanks for sharing your age. But thank you to all our community, all our supporters, um, sponsors of events, uh, people who have attended our events. You have helped create what we have here at Switch On, being the Wellbeing HQ. It's for you. It's for everyone. Um, if you've got a story as well, um, like you'll jump online and Kobe Stefanovic, uh, Brad Oddie, Matt Bowden have been our inaugural supporters and um, forebearers in that space. But we would love to... My good mate, Benny Haywood, is good with a video and a, um, and, a, and a camera. So I would, yeah, put your hand up. If you've got something to share, something to, that you think will inspire or help people, please share your story and we'll, we'll be there in a heartbeat. So thank you, Aaron. And, yeah, look forward to our journey and our goal of making Ipswich the, the healthiest city in the country. Love it. Everyone jump on now and uh, log in. Thanks. Thanks, Brad. Cheers, mate.